Let's check what's inside the table. Hey everyone, it's Anna from Vormi and welcome in the next video. Today we are going to learn about a basic HTML structure, which is HTML table. We will go through some theory at the beginning and later we will learn how to create your own HTML table. But before we start, remember to subscribe our channel. Okay, are you ready? Let's go! So, at the beginning, let's take a look at this image and let's clarify what elements are necessary inside the table. So, each table has to have any header, so we know what kind of data is inside. Then, each table has to have rows and columns and between each row and column, there are cell. Cell is a representation of a single data value, let's say. Okay, to create the table, we will use table tag, which will be like container for all the data inside. Then we would need to create rows. And we create rows using tr. It's easy to remember because it's like table row. And we also have to create cells. Here is some difference because to create header cell, we use th, and to create normal plain cells, we use td. This is the most basic structure of the table. So, you have to use table tag, table rows, and td and th for table cells. To create a little bit more advanced structure in our table, we can use another tag like the head, the body and the foot. Here you can see another image and it starts from the caption. Caption is kind of a tag where you can put a title for your table. So, for example, if your table is a list of users, then you can use caption to put there a title instead of any, I don't know, h1 or h3. And caption tag you are using just under the opening table tag. Just like here. Then you can use t-head to mark the header of your table and inside the t-head we are using t8 for cells and t-row. Then our table body should go to t-body. So there you put like all the body of the table, all the rows, everything. And at the end you can use t-foot if you have any like summary of your table then it's a great idea to use it. When we are building table, uh, we can use two attributes, two special attributes which table can have. Uh, maybe you heard about it already, it's call span and row span. Let's start from call span. Here you can see an image of the table where call span were used. In this example, we used call span to header of the table and it was used to make our header cell using more cells than normally. So it's spread for, like we can see in the code, two cells. It's this one with vegetables and underneath we have two columns but our header is spanned for these two columns with just one cell. And for this we are using call span attribute and passing a number of cells we want to span it. And now let me tell you about row span. It's really really similar to call span but it's about rows as the name says. 
So on the image here, you can see that we have a little bit different table because we have a vertical header and it's normal on the top like name and we have the column with the name and normal cell, then email, we have column with uh, cell with the email and then we have phone number. And let's imagine that our user can have uh, two phone numbers, for example. That's why our phone number header cell has attribute row span because we want it to use more than one cell. And then it plays really nice with two cells for two phone numbers. Okay, let's now open your favorite code editor and we are going to build a simple table. Let's create an HTML file. I've called my table HTML. You can use whatever name you prefer. And let's start from creating a very, very simple HTML file with HTML head and body. Let's add a title into our head. I call mine table by Dwomly. In your case, choice is your. And I will add some place for styles because we are going to add some custom styles to our table. So let's make the place already. Okay, let's start from really, really simple structure of the table. Like every time we are using table tags and inside our table, we will use T head T body and T foot. Inside the T head, we are going to create one table row and we will use four cells. Let's go. So the first one will be ID, the second one will be name, then email. and phone number. Oh, I forgot to mention, we are creating a table with clients, so we'll have this data. And here is one trick, because some of our clients might have more than one phone number. So we are going to use cold spam. And we will put here two, because two is like our max. Let's check out the result. Okay, it's not very pretty yet, but it works. Let's create some body for our table. In this case, we would like to have about 10 rows because I would like to show you how to create a table which will have a fixed header so we can scroll down all, all the rows in the body and we can still see header. That's why we need a little bit more of the data. It's just some fake data which you can generate whenever you want. And I'm going to put here about 10 fake users. Thank you. 
and let's check it out. Oh, we didn't save it. Let's save and check it out once again. Okay, we have all the data. It still doesn't look perfect, but we have it. And now let's add the footer of our table. And here we will have one table row with one cell. But again, this cell, I would like this cell to take all the space so it will have a call span. And here it will have call span for five. Great, and some plain text. Okay, let's check it. It's here. Cool. Now we will add some styling. Let's go to the head section and the style and we start from the body styles. Let's set our margin to zero and let's give it some padding. Let's make it 2M and let's see. Yes, it's better. And let's continue with the styles. Now we are going to style the table, so we want our text to be aligned to the left. Then we want to add here position relative because of this fixed header, which we are going to create in a few seconds. Okay, now let's add border collapse and a background color. I'll add here some very, very light gray, F6. Okay, now let's add some padding to our cells. I would give it 0.5M. And right now let's style our header cells and I would like to give it a yellow color as a background and white color for the text. I want a border radius set to zero and I want some padding. About 10 pixels will be great. Also, here is the place where we are going to work with our fixed header. So let's add here position sticky and top zero, because we want it to be sticked at the top position. Cool, now it looks much, much better. Nothing happens yet, but one second. Let's continue with styling. Okay. Let's add some borders to our cells. It will be one pixel, solid and white color. And border sizing to border box. Yes. Now it's time to style our footer. I want it to be black. And 
font with white text. Cool. Yeah, works, looks good. Let's continue. Also, I would like to have a hover and I would like my rows to change colors when I hover it. So let's create this styling. And I will use this yellow from, from above, but I would like to make it a little bit lighter. I don't know if you use Visual Studio Code, but it's this uh, option where you can change your color in the editor. So I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, not yet. Maybe we didn't save it or refresh it. Oh, okay. Looks pretty cool, right? And the last one thing which we have to do is to make the space for our table less to be able to check if it's scrolling and if the header is fixed. Let's add some styles to our table container diff. So, let's make a max height, I would say 250, and overflow to auto. And let's see if it works. Refresh. Uh-huh. We can scroll it. Cool, right? Great! I hope you liked the video. And there's one more tip. Remember to never put your website layout into the table. There are better ways right now. Ok, if you liked the video, give us a thumb up and remember to subscribe to the channel for the upcoming videos. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!